365 Nation, my guest today on episode number 44 is none other than Pretty Ricky Wildly. How you doing, man? Fantastic. I have to correct yeah. you, though. It is Wildy. The name is it's Wildy. Wildy? I have to correct you. Yes. Yes, I have See, to pronounce that properly. I feel terrible because I've been no saying way. it wildly forever. Wildly. Awesome. Gets everyone right. my whole life, but yes. Thank you. Awesome, man. No, we will make sure that isn't happening again. I feel like an ass for doing it, but man, you, you've been on fire. You're one of the most uh, in-demand wrestlers in Ontario, I'd say. What do you think is uh, contributing to your success right now? Uh, generally, just uh, a different uh, a different flavor of ice cream being brought to the table more than anything, honestly. Uh, just trying to not look like the rest of the poster, and it seems to be working for me. For sure. And I think uh, also on top of that is also your promos. It's a strong suit for you, it seems. Uh, did you work on these? Did you make it a conscious goal to do promos for every promotion? Uh, you know, honestly, uh, I I would say that I've been working on it my entire life, but it's never been like a, a dedicated thing. It's just when I uh, when I drift off day to day uh, doing whatever it is that I'm supposed to be doing, that's generally where my mind kept going. Uh, so by the time I was actually in the wrestling business, I had a few of them ready to go. So it uh, it worked out for me in that sense. Um, I I never set out to do it for every show that I was on. I just, I don't know. I was kind of waiting for someone to give me the green light to let me do promos. And when I figured out I could do them on my own, I, uh, I kind of took to it. I think it's a huge thing for every promotion to have guys like yourself and other gentlemen do, and ladies doing these promos because it really helps get the word out. It's just another flavor. It's another something for fans to see and I, I really enjoy it so thank you for doing that no thank you again it's uh it's all part of the wrestling business that's always been some of my favorite parts of it so that's the idea to try and create that uh that big fight atmosphere that hooked us all as kids have you always loved wrestling is it always something you've wanted to do yeah absolutely i was supposed to be a lawyer um but it doesn't seem to be going that way i don't know there was something about the wrestling business that i just uh it seemed like the most romantic thing in the world. <laughs> Amazing. And were you doing schooling for a lawyer to become a lawyer or? No, I mean, we figured it out pretty early that that wasn't likely uh, where I was headed. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Parents had big dreams, but all I ever saw was wrestling lights. So trying to meet in the middle. And when you were young, you used to come out to old PWA shows as a youth. Do you remember any like? those moments and if you do how special was it or was it just another match when you wrestled easy for our big title honestly it's uh, one of the biggest things in my wrestling career it's it's surreal to me that uh, i got to wrestle for pwa it was i didn't even know about indie wrestling growing up so pwa was my only exposure to it and just seeing wrestling that close and that intense it was uh it was tremendous and there's still like vivid images that i have uh from when i was a kid just kind of burned into my head like there was a first blood match with elian abanero and um john jones jesse jones. jones jesse jones jesse jones my apologies no i've had a long day yes uh it was uh incredible and still to this day like one of the matches that i think about constantly uh so to be able to the main event a pwa show was uh was a heck of a spectacle for myself that's awesome, man. And now, who are some of your like opponents you'd like to wrestle? You wrestled a lot of guys in the last couple of years, but are there a couple guys still on your list that you'd like to check off? Yeah, absolutely. Like it's uh, it's mostly just kind of the tippity top of uh, Ontario at this point, like uh, Josh Alexander and Ethan Page, as well as uh, you know the entire cast of the Pillars. I haven't been able to get in the ring with any of them, uh, but I feel like I could do I could do great things with all of them. So. Hopefully one day. Uh, I'm surprised you guys haven't hooked up yet, but you guys are different flavors, so I can see how they might want you in this chapter and these guys in that, but that'd be great to see some of those matches. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I would hope so as well. I would imagine people just, uh, they don't quite see me in the echelon of those guys, and I understand, but I'm, uh, I'm scratching a claw and trying to get up to that next part. And where did you train? How was your training? Uh, so originally I trained like 
amateur wrestling. I was on the U of T wrestling team. Uh, and then when I graduated, I went to Battle Arts. Uh, I was there for a few years. And then I went on tour uh, with CWF through Northern Canada for several months. Uh, felt like years of my life. Uh, and then I ended up going to Crossbody. There you go, man. Now, with the CWF tours, I, I only went on uh, a couple of them. They're actually pretty short ones. I didn't go on any long ones, but I had a ton of fun on those tours. Yeah, they are uh, they are some incredible memories. Like, <laughs> looking back on my life uh, already, it's like one of the darkest times of my life living in that van, essentially, for six weeks. Wow. It was uh, mind-numbing, but just some of the best times are the same you know what i mean it's uh stuff I'll, I'll never be able to forget stuff i cherish very much close to my heart for sure and, and that's great those are great times when you can look back and go that was hell but without that hell i wouldn't be here today Absolutely. now what is what does 2020 have in store for you you've wrestled for pretty much every promotion where do you want to go where do you want to be what do you want to do 2020, I'm trying to break more into the States, honestly. Uh, there's only like two or three provinces that I haven't been able to hit. So maybe checking those off the list. Uh, but for the most part, just trying to break into the States. I am going to Old Wrestling March 28th, which is in Detroit. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, and just trying to leapfrog from there and uh, hopefully branch out a little bit more into that country. And what are your thoughts on uh, intergender wrestling? I see you doing it a lot right now. It's a hot topic. I think it's going really good now. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to hear what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the same idea. It's a different flavor. Um, I don't know how well a, an all intergender show would do. I mean, I'm sure if you got talented enough people, it would be phenomenal. Um, but to have that on a show as a piece of it, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, my mom came to a show one time and when we got back, she was telling me that she had a great time and all that, but she was not happy to see men and women in the ring together. And I kind of talked to her about it and, you know, she was upset that the men were being aggressive towards these women. And, you know, I started thinking about it, like the men were the bad guys, the men got beat. It all seemed to, it more or less seemed like she got sucked into the show and didn't realize how invested she had got in the situation. I can see that point though as well because uh, for so many years we've had men don't hit women, that's terrible, that's terrible. And now we're on an equal playing field and it seems a little bit suspect sometimes to a lot of fans and then some fans just absolutely love it. So it all depends where you are on that spectrum. But uh, I think it can be good, it can be terrible, just like any match in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Closing out this thing, it's just a short podcast, but I'd love to hear where can fans get in touch with you? Where can they communicate with you? Where can they reach you? Oh, thank you for asking. Pretty Ricky Wildy can be found online, Instagram and Twitter, at Pro Wildy, that's W-I-L-L-D-Y. Facebook, Pretty Ricky Wildy. And please like, support, follow, message. Always happy to hear from a fan. Perfect. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you being on, and I can't wait to have you on again. Well, thank you very much for having me. A huge thanks once again for Pretty Ricky Wildy for coming on the show today. We are excited to have him out. He's going to be on the event on February 29th in Kitchener, taking on Brandon Jacobs. And if you need tickets for this event, you can check out 365prowrestling.com. You can also buy them day of at the event, but make sure to get those tickets. We will be at the Alpine Club, 464 Maple Street in Kitchener. And also do not forget this February 22nd, 65 Pro Wrestling returns to the Willow Point Lions Club in Campbell River. Again, tickets are on sale at 365prowrestling.com, as well as Unveiling Toys, which is located 975A on the Shoppers Row in the Taie Plaza. Thank you guys all again for joining me. Can't wait for the next one.